Today on Judge Faith, a $20 cell phone is keeping these exes from hanging up on their relationship drama. This is someone who I was supposed to be with forever, and instead I find out he's a compulsive liar, he's a cheater, possibly has STDs, put his hands Whoa. on me and my child. Uh, put his hands on me and my child. Pump your brakes, um, sweetheart. I am sitting here in disbelief that the two of you cannot resolve an issue with a cell phone well, that you only had for about two weeks. And later, was the computer a gift or a loan? After 10 years, Your Honor, <laughs> why would I say, no, you can't use my computer when we don't have a history of betrayal? I asked her, can I use your computer? He said, you know what? I have a backup computer. I see you tried to make it. Take it as a gift. Oh. You can have it. You don't run anything in my courtroom. I ask the questions, and she's answering it. Do you understand? Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor, and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now, she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real, and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Crystal Oakley says after her ex-boyfriend cheated on her and they broke up, he refused to return a phone she paid for. She's suing for the cost of the phone and the unpaid bill. Defendant Vincent Johnson says the phone was a gift, but after they broke up, the plaintiff terminated the account. He's countersuing for termination fees and the cost of a new phone. Remain seated and come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, we have Oakley versus Johnson. Thank you, Barbara. Okay, Ms. Crystal Oakley, you are suing the defendant, Vincent Eric Johnson, for $900, the cost of a phone and a phone bill you say he owes you for? Yes. And Mr. Johnson, you are countersuing for $550. You say the plaintiff owes you for early termination fees, a cell phone bill, and the cost of a new phone? Correct. Okay, Ms. Oakley, I'll hear from you first. What's going on here? Uh, well, basically, he's not the person I thought he was. Um, this is someone who I was supposed to be with forever, and instead I find out he's a compulsive liar, he's a cheater, possibly has STDs, put his hands Whoa. on me and my child. Uh, put his hands on me and my child. Pump your brakes, there, um, sweetheart. Uh, so, the two of you were in a dating relationship. How did you meet? We knew each other back from high school, um, and then we, we still hung out with mutual friends. Um, then we wound up dating for a year and a half, uh, moved in together. Um, and that's when I decided to put the phone in my name because he was having some issues paying his phone bills. But then I was at his house for about two weeks and then I discovered um, he had been seeing someone else. Um, the whole STD thing came up. Uh, I was supposed again. to be the only one that knew uh, about it. Uh, this, this keeps popping up. Um, there's a story before that. Uh, I receive a call from a, a, a cousin to go to a, a baseball game. My phone rings, she checks my phone. There's an inbound message from a girl that I had been dating while we weren't together, and she sees that inbound message. She didn't say nothing all day long. We get home, we're getting ready to go to bed, here she comes, um, and this is where it starts. She's going left and right, and I tell her, hey, look, cut it out. It's 12 o'clock at night, I gotta go to work in the morning, I don't have time for this, and she's going on and on. And I told her, hey, cut it out, or it's about to get real ugly No, because real he fast. had told me that he hadn't been seeing anyone else, and that we he didn't, didn't tell anybody months. else. I asked you during that time period, had you been seen, seeing anyone else? So that we're back together, am I gonna have any surprises with some female saying, hey, we did this and that? She knew about the um, STD apparently as well, and that's what started the conversation, as well as he had been in um, fact seeing I her. I brought that paper night, that shows that, I do not have an STD. Night, what's Kicks going on? Out. What do you mean? Why, why are we talking about an STD about the phone? Did I, 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 don't know. Phone? I don't know. I don't know what, what's going on with that, but uh, you keep bringing it up. <laughs> well, the point is, because I brought all that, she wasn't supposed to, first of all, she never existed in the beginning, as well as that's how I got started. So I was like, how does she even know about this you know, health issue? That's how the conversation got because started. Because you said that day. He, you were saying he confided in you about a health issue he was having. Correct. And you thought you were the only one. I was one the only that one that knew. So one, that's how I knew he was seeing her on top but of the stuff again, that she said. We're, we're here about a phone. Yeah, and but you kicked me out that night. That's how this is how we got to this stuff. point. 
That's how we got. He kicked me out that night, me and my son. So this is how the two of you broke up. This Correct. is the end of their relationship. Yes. And then that's when everything happens with the phone. The phone. Absolutely. So at some point you say what about the so phone? So that Friday when I'm getting my stuff together, I'm, I emailed him and I asked him, so what about the phone? He will not give it back. You don't want responsibility for him being on your plan, right? Correct. You want him to pay the bills and be responsible for the Absolutely. phone. Absolutely. Okay, so you don't need the phone back to do that. To return so, it. Or you, there's two options. You can actually return it and he can just, you know, do his own thing or you can transfer responsibility. Ah, which we I went tried. Back, I tried to we transfer went back responsibility and forth with that. over Hold and over and over Hold and over again. Hold on a second, sir. Who has the phone? I do. Why have you not transferred I have responsibility offered that. to I have him? offered that. Even on my demand letter no, that I sent him. No, she no, ma'am. No, ma'am. In your, in your complaint to the court, you wrote that he called you and said that he wanted the phone Absolutely. and the responsibility to the phone to be transferred. In your complaint to the court, you said you didn't feel comfortable doing that. Coming up, is their relationship really over or just on hold? She froze the account. She reported the phone stolen, so I can't do anything with that phone. It's just a paperweight. This is not about the phone. This is about the drama and a way for you to remain in contact. I this don't. is the only. Yes, it is because there is no way. If you didn't want to be in contact with him, you wouldn't be in contact with him at all. And later, they were best friends until she tried to take what wasn't hers. She's asking, can she borrow my car? That's a big no. You ask, can you borrow my wigs? Are you serious? Not on my watch. I got a clock, I got a watch, but I ain't got the time. Not for a woman like, oh. Uh. Did you let her borrow your car? No car, no wigs, no man. That's three things I don't do. Plaintiff Crystal Oakley says after her ex-boyfriend cheated on her and they broke up, he refused to return a phone she paid for. She's suing for the cost of the phone and the unpaid bill. Defendant Vincent Johnson says the phone was a gift, and after they broke up, the plaintiff terminated the account. He's countersuing for termination fees and the cost of a new phone. Within 14 days, you could have transferred responsibility of the phone. Absolutely. It takes one call. I've looked at a series of events that have happened since the two of you broke up about this phone, where you've called him, you've went to see him, you, got, you guys had another physical altercation all over this phone. It takes one call to T-Mobile to transfer responsibility to his name. So why are you here today? Is it that you, it's not about the phone, and this is just a way for you to keep it's in not. contact? Oh, no, absolutely keep not. Baby no, him, when this I is went an back. issue? Because why have you not transferred responsibility because to, of the phone to him? You pay $20 for the phone, who cares about the phone? What's your counterclaim about? Uh, I'm a director of sales. I have 500 contacts. I have two kids. I can't get in touch with my people. So I have to go out and buy a whole new phone that cost me $100. So you're suing her over that first phone? Yes. She turned it in. OK. And gave me a new S5. It was upgraded. So since she turned it in and we had the altercation Saturday, she called T-Mobile. She froze the account. She reported the phone stolen. So I can't do anything with the phone. I go to T-Mobile and say, hey, I'll, I have a phone. All you have to do is just hook it up. Sir, it'll be $300 to even turn it on. And then I come to find out she's reported it stolen, locked the number, and froze the account. So I can't do anything with that phone. It's just a paperwork. Why did you report Sh the phone stolen? Sprint. Well, that's just how they do it on the uh, yeah, no, T-Mobile. No, 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 In no, T-Mobile, no. if you'll see the sheet that I have, in T-Mobile, that's how it's just listed there. I, I'm, I... Thank you. I'm sorry, you, you, ma'am, you're, you're 35 years old. You're 37 years old. Both of you have children. Yes, ma'am. I am sitting here in disbelief that the two of you cannot resolve an issue with a cell phone well, that you only had for about two weeks. Two weeks. Well, right. And we have but gotten now, to this point now also, where you can't even resolve an issue with a cell phone. First, the fact that you have gone on and called the police Twice. and gotten all these people involved me down. and he tried to have me. repeated contact with him. Let me, me well. finish. Let me finish to get a $20 phone back. Ma'am, let it go. It's $20. It's a it's phone. It's $700. Let it go. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. I have I have an iPhone. I've had a cell phone for 10 years. I know exactly how the plans work. It takes one phone call to T-Mobile to transfer. Excuse me. Let me finish speaking. This is not about the phone. This is about the drama and a way for you to remain in contact. This is the only Yes, it is, because there is no way. If you didn't want to be in contact with him, you wouldn't be in contact with him at all. OK, this is not how you handle issues that come up in relationships. And you should know better, because you have kids that you are raising. And when you, there are issues and there are conflict, you find a way to resolve it. You don't let it get to this point over a $20 cell phone.
your counterclaim, I'm not holding her responsible. Listen, the two of you want to live together, share a house together, share a bed, share, share the bills, share the phones, whatever. But don't bring all of this to me to try to then sort out. And, you know, if you have a problem, if you want your life to be fixed, call Ayala Banzant. Don't come to my courtroom to fix it because this is a this is not a legal issue. This is a personal issue. Now, you know what to do with the phone. Cut it off. Get it transferred to him. You get the phone in your name. Your counterclaim is dismissed. Your case is dismissed as well, ma'am. Plaintiff Frida Jackson is suing her former friend for the cost of a borrowed computer. She is accompanied by her mother, Rose Jackson. But defendant Natasha Katet says she doesn't know anything, and the plaintiff gave her the computer as a gift. Ms. Jackson, you are suing the defendant, Natasha Katet, for $1,000, the value of a computer you say you loaned to her and she refused to return to you. Correct? Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. tell me about that. How do you know the defendant, first of all? I know the defendant. I met her. Uh, she was homeless. And she came to me looking for a place to stay. I told her she couldn't stay with me, so I talked to the apartment owner who had pulled strings to help her get an apartment, so she got an apartment next door to me, that which is helped her out. Your honor. And when did Don't you Don't interrupt me when I'm talking. Mind your manners, Ms. Jackson. Yes, Your Honor. I'm going to ask you to mind your manners in my courtroom. Don't speak to another litigant. That's my job. You understand? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. When did you meet the defendant? I met the defendant about 11 years ago. Okay, and when you met her, you say she was homeless? Yes. Ma so I helped her get an what apartment that's in the apartment. I met her exactly right after I got out of the Navy. I served from 1994 to 2004. I am a U.S. veteran in the Navy. So I served for 10 that years. That doesn't have anything when to do with the case. Hold on a second. I would like what my she computer. has to say. Go ahead, Ms. Cadet. Okay. Yes, so as soon as I got out, I was very new into the civilian world. So uh, I had, uh, uh, I was staying in a place that I was looking this for apartment. This doesn't have anything Ms. to Jackson, do with the case. Ms. Jackson, my stop computer. into her. I asked her a question and she's answering it. You don't run anything in my courtroom. I asked the questions and she's answering it. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. At some point, you decide to lend, and I know you say it was a gift, but at some point, you give the defendant a computer. She asked, well. can't you borrow my computer because her computer at home was broken. When was that? That was, I'd say, beginning of February. I've known her for over 10 years. So I didn't have a problem lending her a computer. She's asked, can she borrow my car? That's a big no. You ask, can you borrow my wigs? Are you serious? Not on my watch. <laughs> I got a clock, I got a watch, but I ain't got the time. Not for a woman like her. I hear so you. So after 10 years, Your <laughs> Honor, why would I say, no, you can't use my computer when we don't have a history of betrayal? Did you let her borrow your car before? No, that's oh. a no. No car, no wigs, no man. That's three things I don't do. <laughs> so then she says, uh, I didn't have a problem saying, no, you can't use my computer because she seems to me she's always been business-minded, and I like that. I'm also business-minded. She said she wants to borrow a computer for one week. One week passed, two weeks passed, three weeks. Here it is six months later, no text, no phone calls, knowing that she's been avoiding me. When did you first reach out to her and say, hey, what's going on? Where's my computer? Uh, the second week after she had the computer. What and happened? And then that point on... Did you reach her? No, she, she ignored the phone calls. I spoke to her on one occasion when she said, I can come pick it up. I said, I So you I go like to computer. pick up the computer, and on your way, what happens? I go pick up the computer. She's not home. Elderly man comes in, answer the door, and I left a message with him. I've showed up different occasions. My mother has been with me, and she would not return any of the phone calls. So I pushed star 67 to see if she answered the phone call, and she did. And I said, this is the Star 67 is when you block the number. That's the private. And call. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. So then she didn't answer the phone call. So I said, Mother, <laughs> can you call Natasha? My mother called Natasha. Natasha answered the phone. She didn't recognize her number. You thought she this was avoiding you. This is my career. You. Yeah, this is my career. I go, to, I go to school for hospital administration. So you're taking my education. I'm handicapped because I cannot use my computer. She has it. I can't go a week without my laptop. There's just no way. I have right. everything on there. And you're saying you work and you go to school and all these other things. Mm -hmm. Why would you lend your computer to someone for a week? I loaned the tour for one week because the school that I'm in, you have to do one chapter a week. So my chapter's done. I'm fine with the week. But after that... What did you use in the meantime? Did you have anything that you I didn't used? have to do... Have, yeah, you, that have you gotten was... another computer since you loaned her that one? No, no. I have a... Okay. Next on Judge Faith...
in a short period of time, uh, things were going well. I lost the foot shot because the fire come, it did such fire fire. So a deep fat fryer caught on fire. Caught on fire. <laughs> Plaintiff Frida Jackson is suing her former friend for the cost of a borrowed computer. Joining her in court is her mother, Rose Jackson. Defendant Natasha Katet says she doesn't know anything, and the plaintiff gave her the computer as a gift. Tell me about the conversation you had with her when you say she gave you the computer. I want to know the exact conversation. Excellent, excellent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was a gift, ma'am. It was totally a gift. Oh. The relationship I've had with, with Frida, that I've known that I've had with Frida, is that I would do anything for Frida anytime she called me in the middle of the night, she had any problem, I would always be there for her. Ooh. I was like a beacon Ooh. of light into her life. It's, it's a source of encouragement. Ooh. She had main problem, she would come Ooh. to my house, she'll Ooh. spend the night, she'll bring her daughter. She usually yeah. have, yeah. she doesn't yeah. live here where yeah. I was yeah. living yeah. like this yeah. again. Ms. Jackson, I just Ms. Jackson. Encounter, yes. I need to I had hear. just encountered a food truck. What happened? I was taking my business from a different level, okay? So I had a, a, a food truck truck, uh, leasing it, very exciting, very going. How much uh, were you leasing the food truck for? Uh, the deal was $1,000 a month to pay on a monthly. So you started your own business? Yes, I, yes, exactly. I had a partner that come in and help me. The, 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 the way the partnership w work out is that he would be provided the food truck, okay, for me, for me to lease, and then he would get some of the profits of the So business. why can you afford to buy a computer on your own? I started this business, I didn't have much fun to get it going. I did have a backup computer. I had a computer that was a small laptop that I was using. In a short period of time, uh, things were going well. I lost the food truck because the fire come, it did such fire fire. So <laughs> a deep fat fryer caught on fire. Caught on fire. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Instead of the food Your truck. Honor. Because the food truck is actually a so kitchen was this, on wheel. Tell me about the conversation. I understand you lost the food truck. I lost the food you truck. Were and down my on backup your laptop. laptop was inside of the food truck. Okay, so your laptop was in the food truck. So tell me about the conversation you had with the plaintiff about her computer. Yes. I asked her, can I use your computer? He said, you know what, I have a backup computer. I see you try to make it, take it as a gift. Oh. You can have it, okay? Did you know that this was a computer that she used for school and for work? No, she did not use that computer for school, ma'am, because she has her own laptop. That computer was sitting in her house. She said, I'm not using it anyway. Has she ever given you anything before? Uh, Prior not really, to this but computer? I have given her stuff before. I have given her a uh, uh, barbecue grilled. As well as I had a, a big flat screen TV that cost over $1,400. So let me ask you, why do, why do you think she's saying that the computer was a loan? Did she ever call you and say, I'd like my computer back, and you said, okay, come and pick it up? Did that no, happen? No, no. So that, never, that conversation no, never happened? No, no, no. I had a few calls from Frida. However, I did not take the call. I was not. I did not have a, uh, enough minutes into my, uh, my phone. I did not have any Ooh. money because when this happened with the fire, I lost my business. My landlord wanted to evict me. And my van that I usually drive to go, the transmission broke down, OK? So I was in a state emotionally that I really was not returning any call because I was trying to survive. Are you the plaintiff's mother? Your Honor, can I? Ms. Jackson, yeah. you want to say something? Please. Uh, stand up and walk. Thank you. And approach the lectern. What do you have to say about this case? Latasha is total drama queen, period. She that lies a lot. True. No, you are supporting your Ms. daughter. Ms. Cadet, in please, the truth. do not interrupt. Very well, ma'am. Go ahead, Ms. Jackson. That one there, she is a mess. Your Big daughter is a mess. Drama queen. No, Miss Miss Cadet. I'm so sorry. That's not. Please don't at all. interrupt. And now, Judge Faith rules. She told me that a millionaire bought her a truck, a roach coach. What is a roach coach? <laughs> a food <laughs> truck. Did somebody buy you the food truck? It was a partnership. I didn't even purchase for me from your millionaire friend. Uh, yes, this person that does that, yes, he is a millionaire. Yes, he is. Okay. I mean, you, there are people that are millionaires. Ms. Jackson, mean... did you ever witness any of the times that your daughter tried to get the laptop back from the defendant? Yes, no. I did. Okay. Well, when did you get the computer, Ms. Jackson? Your I daughter. got the computer 2013. What kind of computer is it? It is a Dell. Do you have another computer that you're using now? Yes. You can have a seat, Ms. Jackson. Thank you. Thank you. Value of a 2013 Dell desktop computer is around $350. Judgment for the plaintiff in this case for $350. Pay over the value of the computer. 